What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. You know it's gonna be a eventful day when we have the spare tire out of the car. Actually, just kidding. Today we're just gonna be kind of talking about things. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We have a lot of fun with this bucket and plenty of others. So for the past two and a half years of my ownership of this car, everyone has been telling me to put it away for the winter and I ignored them. Rust came up, we fixed the rust and now I learned my lesson and I'd like to keep this car nice. So we're gonna be taking this chance today to kind of just discuss the channel, the car, future plans, all of the kind of nitty gritty. If you're looking for more action, this is not really the video. <laughs> So you can kind of go ahead and click off. But if you do want to stay, well, I'll tell you what's going on. So right now we're just doing an oil change before the winter. Did a collab with Blackstone Labs. I'll link it somewhere up here where we kind of discussed the oil change history of this car and kind of the shape of the motor. It was actually really cool and interesting to kind of learn about oil and everything that goes into the process. But watch that after you're done watching this video. I guess we'll start at what the end of the year was like. So we started the hot take series which is kind of like a car viewer series renamed from POV Driving Impressions. I'm not going to go into it again why I changed the name, but kind of gauge how many of you started watching and subscribed because of it, or how many of you are current subscribers that are watching it, and how many of you want to see me make more of those, or would rather see more content with the project car. But I certainly have a lot of fun making them, and a lot of you seem to enjoy watching them. I know that blue E36 M3 was, it was just such an amazing car. I was so happy to get to film that. Comment down below what you think of that series. We'll touch more on that later. But on to news with the car. This car now has 248,000, I want to say 300 miles. Get ready, we're about to do the BMW thing, not smack that. Ooh. Focus. Oh. Oh, that was a tight fit. Uh, yeah. Uh, almost 250,000 miles. I used 250,000 miles in another video as uh, clickbait, but we're, we're, we're actually almost there. How do I exit a game? The last video I made like this, why I almost sold my M3, I said that the content for the channel would slow down a lot, and it did for a short period of time, but at the end of the year, I honestly could not have been more incorrect. This has been the best month for this channel to date. Almost a hundred of you here are new, or maybe it is a hundred, I don't know, but uh, hello. Thank you for joining in. I really appreciate all of you that subscribe. Each and every one of you means a lot to me. I know I haven't vlogged as much with Sparky in the past couple of months. Things have been really busy, but she's gotten a few new things. One of which was a new front control arm. Uh, right, uh, well, no. I'm not gonna bother reaching under there right now, but she got a new control arm. The Euro one, the ball joint, for lack of a better word, uh, fell out, the outer one, which is really scary. I think I'll end up doing the driver's front one next season because it's already showing signs of cracking, similar to the way this one did before it just poof, popped out. I don't like trashing auto manufacturers or parts manufacturers, but it was a Euro control arm, and I don't think I'll be buying another one again, unless they reach out for whatever reason, but it was kind of a scary experience, and overall, I just don't think it's something that should happen to a control arm. In other news, and <laughs> coming to the rear, I also had to warranty the rear control arms. I don't know if you can really see them there. Those are some new Turner Motorsport rear camber arms. These are now the street version. I had the track version with the Heim style joints and the Heim joints went bad after only a year of street driving. It's hard to kind of say why they failed, but I mean, I used the track part on a street car. But next season, one of the first videos I'm gonna be making is talking about the differences between the rubber and Heim style joint and the TLDR, let me tell you, it is night and day. I much prefer the rubber, but we'll talk about that next car season. Shout out to Turner Motorsport for being on top of their warranty game. As soon as I told them that the camera arms had failed and it was only a year, they were immediately like, that's despicable, and they took them back, even though it was a track part on a street car. So they're very good about that. And other videos coming up, I do want to make a video on the FX Stage 2 Clutch Kit. I know I said I was going to do it this summer, but things got busy, and if you were following the channel, you know that we were having all sorts of issues with this motor. Speaking of which, the misfire is for the most part gone. I put a new genuine... BMW valve cover on it and valve cover gasket of FCP Euro. That was like $460 or something, which, yeah, you pay, you gotta, sometimes, 
with these genuine BMW parts, you do have to pay to play. So, but that's new now, and it's probably gonna be good for another 20 years. Sometimes the misfire does still show on cold starts or at idle, but it's very inconsistent. And it could be a vacuum leak. My guess is a vacuum leak. Our buddy old pal, the reservoir, is leaking coolant. I look, look at that. That's all coolant dots. I literally, like, cannot with the cooling systems on these cars. This has been the second reservoir I've got, no, third reservoir I've gone through with this car and they just, they keep failing. I don't know what happened. One day I went to go open up this reservoir to check it and then after that, that was it. Like I got air in the system or something, but now it's just spitting out from that hose. So I, I have no idea. Maybe, I think next time I pull this out, I'm just gonna go buy a metal one or find some other solution because I'm tired of these things leaking even though they're literally new. Comment down below your E36 cooling system experiences. Have you had issues with reservoir or am I literally the only one on this planet? Sometimes I feel like I'm just in my own little enclosed bubble and whenever I have these issues, it's just me and no one else, but I feel like, I feel like I'm not the only one. I feel like on the internet somewhere, people talk about the cooling system in these cars. But onto the biggest issue with the car. And this one is <laughs> kind of a scary one. It is a clutch engagement issue. So as you all may or may not know, depending on how new you are here, I've, this is the second trans on this car, the second ZF gearbox. I had it replaced and we did the clutch. We did everything, the bell housing. Well, except we didn't replace the clutch again after I put it backwards, but it was inspected and it was fine. But that's a whole story. I tested the clutch engagement theory or I know it's the clutch not disengaging all the way because if you're on flat ground, the car with the clutch in, it'll lock you out of all the gears and it, it just won't let you in. And sometimes when you're moving or trying to shift, it just doesn't, it feels like it's not shifting as smoothly as it should or it's a little too notchy. But on flat ground, when it's doing it, if you try to put it into one, the car will start rolling before it is in gear while you're trying to put it into gear and it'll keep happening. And eventually it will just let you in. So that is a that is our surefire sign that it is a clutch engagement issue. I think next season the first course of action for that is going to be to bleed the clutch hydraulics. Maybe air got into the lines. And if air isn't in the line, it could, the only other things it could be is a bad slave or a bad master, which are both new, or maybe the line itself. But we're going to start small and move our way up. And it's also part of why I now don't want to make the FX video until I figure it out because if, say, the pressure plate were bad, that'd be something I'd want to talk about in the video. The clutch kit only has 15,000 miles on it, and I used the pressure plate in the kit. But I really doubt that's the case. I feel like it's air in the line. Other than that, we just have a couple of small leaks. I think a small oil leak somewhere, and maybe a diff leak, but it's all small, easy stuff. We're in good shape otherwise. But now, I think we should address our oil change because that is... No longer dripping. So let's go ahead and get Sparky here on the ground. Now that's done, I wanted to get the oil change done before the winter because I figured if she's gonna be started throughout the course of the winter, might as well have clean oil in it. What do you think, guys? Is she gonna make it to 300K? I'm really excited for the next summer and more track days and more road trips. I wanna do all those things. Mods for this car, or at this point in the build, well, we're done. I just, this point in the build, we're just driving the car. The only other mod I could maybe think of is an M50 manifold, which I've had, I've had one sitting in a box for probably more of my ownership of this car than not, but I really like how she drives now and I'm not overly in a hurry to go ahead and tear apart things again that don't need to come off. But if you wanted an update on the car, there it is. The values in these cars are kind of starting to come down. So even if selling her was a thought in my mind, I kind of missed my window of opportunity, but I really don't have a need or want to sell this car. I mean, this, this was my dream spec E36 M3, a silver on black M3 sedan other than an Estoril two-door M3 coupe. But I think down the line, I know I'm gonna have an M3 Evo. We'll probably, I'll pick up an M3 Evo and park it next to this car. So I have two matching cars in my garage. But speaking of which, if you have an Estoril Blue, well, if you have an M3 Evo, 
Uh, give me a call. Let me know. I'm gonna drive it. I'm gonna do a video with it. And if it's blue, I'll probably be asking you to buy it in a few years. As far as the channel goes, for realsies this time, we're gonna be slowing down the vlog content. Unfortunately, we live in the winter wonderland. Well, this is Ohio right now, but we live up north, and when they salt the roads, cars will start to rust out. I don't want that to happen to this, this poor, this poor baby. So we're putting her away. We'll still continue the hot take and Sunday drive series if we get cars to do, but the vlog content is gonna until next year. We are also gonna start the Miata build next year, which if you're, like most of you are, here for the E36 and BMW content, do not fret. We will still continue these videos. Nothing's gonna take away from this. My roommate just has the Miata and I think it's cool. I wanna explore more parts of the automotive hobby. So if you do like Miatas, uh, take watch that too when we start making videos. I think the build's gonna be really cool. But with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed my rant. If you wanna see more content, like, subscribe, and share the videos with your friends. If you're new viewers here, welcome. We have a lot of fun here and thank you for tuning in. If you're current viewers, also thank you for tuning in. It's really been a fun year with this car and I'm so excited for what the future holds. But take care everyone, I'll see you in the next one.